I now want to bring up Dr. Paul Cole. He has, does have a doctorate in psychology, and he leads Tendril's efforts to engage uh, consumers. He's the vice president of consumer products at Tendril's, so he knows whereof he speaks. So, Paul, please inform us about the customer journey. Uh, thank you very much, Jesse. Patty, that was a great job. Very, very interesting to hear. I want to talk about four things today. I want to talk about Tendril's perspective on on the customer journey and how we think of the journey as opposed to engagement. I want to talk then about the notion of persistence. Um, if you come from the energy efficiency world, you're, the question about behavioral oriented uh, interventions is always about are they persistent. Uh, from a smart grid point of view, it's, it's a bit different, but we've taken the notion of persistent behavior change and applied it across products. So the next thing I'll do is talk about how we've done that from paper to email to the web. And finally, I'll wrap up with a brief uh, discussion of some of the findings. Uh, Tendril is a, a computing platform company that provides uh, smart energy solutions from efficiency, smart grid, demand response, and home energy management. Uh, we are based in Boulder. So I think the industry is clearly agreed at this point that energy efficiency, smart grid energy management is not purely a technical problem. It's a human problem as well as a technical problem. And I think the industry, with the help of people like Patty, are learning how to think about segmentation and where to start the set of services. We think about engagement over time. So we are starting to think about not just how do you engage a consumer in a certain uh, utility offering or product, but how you sequence those products. How do you understand where a consumer is likely to start, what they may be interested in next, and how do you position those products over time? I come from the Boston area. So if I decided I was going to run the marathon today, I wouldn't go out and start a 10-mile run. I would go out and probably sign up with a training group at my local gym and start running one or two miles. So we know that when people change, when people try something new, they try it in small steps, and that once those steps are successful, the success leads to higher levels of interest motivation and whether it's a, a willingness to continue in a program or try a, another program. So we like to think about products and services from that point of view. So when I talk about home energy reports, I'm going to talk about them as a starting point and how to use them to move to other kinds of products and services you as a utility may be providing. So at, at Tendril, uh, we think that customers move from awareness to insight to action. And so we've provided a series of products all the way from home energy reports to uh, what we call as, uh, orchestration or smart home energy management. Um, and we like to think about helping utilities move customers along that journey from a report to a, a web portal application, a mobile application, to real-time pricing or demand response. Today I'm going to talk about the behavioral science side of it. I'm not going to talk about the building energy, but our products support and have two basic frameworks that inform the products. Uh, I'm also going to talk about paper reports and the lower side of the journey. So. How do you move people from a paper report into a web application? So one of the things we've learned from behavior science is this notion of persistence. So when we talk about helping people save energy, when we talk about getting people to enroll in programs, getting people to accept smart meters, what's important is not that you can get provoke a change, but that that change remains over time, that it's persistent. That means that it's habitual. And what the behavior science research tells us going back 50 years is that creating persistent change is, one, difficult to do. 
but two, there's a series of very clear elements that need to be here. And these are the four elements. The elements are the ability to set a goal, the ability to have information and action, specific steps to, to make progress to the goal, the ability to get feedback against that goal, and to do that in the context of a social environment that supports that. And you can think about that across all of the health kinds of programs, all of our educational programs. They all are built on the same kind of premise. And the other two pieces of that are, are really personalization and participation. So if you think about what our educational you know, institutions, how they function, they don't focus on lectures anymore. They focus on some balance between lectures and seminars. And so what, what that tells us is that people learn not just by being spoken to, but by interacting with the information. So the two pieces that are important is how do you make sure that information is relevant to people, but also how do you create opportunities for people to participate, to engage with information. So let's talk about paper reports. So what we know across consumers, yeah, kind of independent of the segmentation, of course there are differences, as the segmentation research tells us, but what we know across the, the customers is that energy is not necessarily high on people's mind, right? It's not exactly one of the things that costs the most in their house typically. It's not something that they spend a lot of time thinking about. And what the paper report begins to do is enable people to start to think about energy, start to create some awareness about energy. So all of a sudden the paper report with a social comparison, with uh, information over time begins to give people a hook, begins to give people a context for how to interpret, how to consider their energy use. And it's a big step forward, but it's a step around awareness. It's a step that, that people are beginning to, to think about. So a paper report is an example of one-way communication. And engagement in one-way communication like a lecture is, is limited. There's an impact, but in terms of creating persistent change, habitual change, participation, engagement, interaction requires another level of what psychologists call internalization. The motivation is internalized. Your goal is something you've decided to pursue independent of external factors. One or so, a, a real quick thing here is, is that we don't provide a goal. We think that in a paper report, it's important for people to identify with the information. So in a context like a web, that's where we provide a goal and we allow people to set goals. In a paper report, it's important to provide a level of support and uh, customer uh, support. And when you think about scaling these kinds of systems, there's a number of things to consider. These are some of them in terms of once you get into the millions of reports, what it takes to build a computer system that supports that. I'm not going to go into detail, but it's important to think about the volume uh, when you build these kind of solutions. So we see email as a way to then begin to move people from paper reports into a more interactive method. And there are a couple of things we do. One is this notion of challenges, where we provide kind of fun activities through email, and we ask people to interact and, and to post a comment, a kind of gaming activity. The next one is a tutorial. And so tutorials break up. Uh, this is around engagement, but you could do it around DR. You could do it about smart grid. Break up a part of a piece of information that's important to get through to your customers and provide it over time. So we built a tutorial about energy-efficient lighting. And well, this is an example. Week one, we deliver a a small animation and an activity about understanding what's going on in your house. Week two is another animation with an assessment. Week three is a, a personalized shopping list. Week four is kind of a, a little bit about habits. And what we've seen is when you break up information, when you engage people with kind of fun activities and make this small bite-sized, we found in a small study but a significant study, very high uptake. Uh, on the website, we integrate all these. One study that we have continued, which is the Cape Light Compact, from a P2 
pure behavioral approach with a web portal with real-time data, we have two and a half years of 9% savings with weekly logins. And that's an example of the kind of persistence you can get with a behavioral method. Thank you, Paul. And in the interest of time, we are going to have to move on. But we did get some very interesting questions, including from uh, overseas. And uh, as before, we will be answering these questions by email in a frequently asked questions document. You'll get a link to that as well as a link to the slides. This is the Science of Customer Engagement webinar, and it's the first in a series. So we'll be continuing down this path with Paul and with others in future webinars. Uh, watch this space. We'll also email you as well.